two, three, four, five. We have five. All right. How are we doing? Jody, can you hear me? Okay. Then let's call this meeting to order. <coughs> um, it's the Central Vermont Career Center School District special meeting of November 18th, 2024. Um, as far as I can see, we do have a quorum. So um, do we have any guests? Um, we all agree to be happy, pleasant, agreeable people. Do we have any public comments or correspondence for this evening? Jody, have you gotten any correspondence? Okay, there we go. Yeah. Uh, no, I have not. We did get monitored by the AOE on Thursday of last week. So that we'll be talking more about that in our meeting in December. Okay, very good. Um I need um does every has everyone seen the agenda? I need a motion to approve the agenda, please. So moved. Thank you. I need a second. <coughs> second that. Thank you. Um, any additions or corrections to this agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> agenda is approved. We can go on to the consent agenda, which is the minutes of the uh, November 4th, 2024 meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, motion to approve that agenda. I'm sorry, to approve those minutes. I'll move that. Thank you. I need a second. I'll second it. Any comment, further comment on the agenda? Or I'm sorry, the minutes, I'll get there. Um, all right, um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Um, so now we have board discussion and action items. And the first piece for discussion is our budget. So Jody, I'll turn it over to you for budget. Uh, and I'll turn it right straight over to Michelle, which she's super excited about. She's in the room with me. Also, Stephanie is here taking notes and Carl is here listening in. Okay. Hi. Most, Take it away. most exciting night of the year talking about the budget um i hope everybody had time to review the information i sent um i know we had talked about how we come up with our budget and how we come up with our tuition amount and how that affects um, other school districts and that sort of thing so one thing that i made sure to send to you was our projected tuition draft that um, looks like this. Um, but essentially how our, our budget is um, a little more straightforward than local school budgets. We have our total expenditures less all of our uh, revenues, which is uh, we get two large grants one's a vocational educational support grant and one is a state tuition reduction grant uh, we get a little bit of grant funding for our salary assistance um, and then minus our business revenues and that leaves us with a total amount we have to rate be raised by tuitions so we take that number and divide it by the FTEs the amount of students we're able to bill for that's based off a six semester average. So that's a period of over three years. They take a census in the fall and the spring and they average those numbers all together. So I'm anticipating next year, likely our FTEs of the number we'll be able to bill for for students is 194. Unlike other schools or local school districts, it's not a weighted average, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're counting 
one student as one FTE. All students pay the same amount of tuition, um, no matter their needs or their program. Um, a couple of things to kind of point out here, I'm still waiting on some numbers, but the base education rate, that's a rate that's given to us by the AOE. It's usually announced, last year I got the notification on December 1st, but of that base education rate, we automatically get 87% of that on behalf of our sending school districts. So that comes directly to us instead of going to the sending schools. Also, that base education rate determines the amount of state tuition reduction that we're gonna get, and that's 35%. So those are our two biggest grants. And again, those are based off numbers given to us by the AOE. And I anticipate in the next two weeks, we'll get them. They're based on November 15th um, CPI, which is a cumulative price index. So any day now, I will get that number. It does tend to go up, but not substantially, maybe a few hundred dollars. Uh, I, so I don't, I mean, it will affect us, but um, not substantially when we're talking about our overall budget. That's kind of just to go over our tuition. You know, we have our big number minus our revenues equals what we have to be raised by tuitions. Does that make sense to everybody? Or does anybody have any questions on that? Again, it's really hard. We can't tell directly sending schools. We can tell them um, our tuition amounts and they can give us an, we can give them an estimate of what that's gonna do, but we can't tell them what it's gonna actually affect their, their tax rates on their local towns. We just, we wouldn't know. We don't know what their CLA rate is. We don't know what their weighted average rate is. We don't, there's so many things that we don't know. The ours is just a straight one for one, one student equals one FTE, and we bill what we bill for everybody. Guy, do you have a question for me? Just a quick question. Uh, taking a look at your methodology in terms of the, the tuition piece, because last year, uh we guessed a little high and so we end up reimbursing the schools or you know doing a, a different payment uh so is your is your your piece on this to be conservative or to be what well, what how, how do you best guess without having the information um, so actually so two years ago is when we overcharged tuition and we did end up having to pay this year, our preliminary numbers have come in and we're within a $400 range of what we actually spent versus our, our tuition. Um, we can go over and under 3% either way without having to reimburse or bill school districts. So that gives us a little bit of a buffer room. Um, really, we try not to announce or come up with a final decision until probably end of December, we can start guesstimating what it's going to be the beginning of December when we start talking to school districts, but until I get those final numbers of the base education rate and um, our number of FTEs, it's it, we tend to hold off on officials. So Jody usually starts meeting school districts in early December, and so we have this projection. We let them know this is what we think it's going to be, and then we don't finalize our tuition until January 15th when we have all the numbers in place. And then we just have to do our best to expense, spend everything we are going to say we're going to spend, not go over and under, because otherwise that goes back to the sending schools. Yeah, thank you. So two other documents that I had sent, uh, one of them is uh, FY26 budget. That's uh, the level services budget. That really only, that includes the knowns, those are the knowns. I know healthcare costs are going to go up and I have those numbers. So those are, again, not official until the board, uh, the Vermont Health Initiative Board accepts them. But again, they usually don't change. They're all set. Um, as well as some preliminary costs of other things that are going to be increasing. So my budget, the FY26 budget, 
with a 9% increase is that is level services, not, not closing programs, not opening programs, not spending any extra money on anything we may need. This one? Yep. N not including any kind of deferred maintenance costs or anything else that we may need. This is absolutely level services if we keep it as is less the amount of what our contract, our um, CBAs, our negotiations. I do not have, we have an exchange proposal, so I have no idea where to put in, what to put in for numbers on those, but based off everything else, we can, we're looking at at least a 9% overall increase to our budget. When I put that number into our projection, our projected tuition draft, that did increase our tuition about 7.2% overall and about $1,359 to each, to the school districts for each student that they will be sending to us. So again, 9% is, is level funding with this, and that will increase the tuition about 7.2%. Lyman. Question. Do you um, do you have any idea how that nine percent uh, is reflected in other other districts or anything like that? We're just starting budgeting season, so I'm not exactly sure where people are going to land. But um, I anticipate because of the increase in health insurance, very likely everybody's going to be seen. Unless they cut staff, double digit increases to their budgets. There's just no way to get around it when you have health insurance increases the way that we have the past, I think, three years it's been double digits. This year came in a little bit lower than anticipated, actually 11.9%, uh, where last year it was 16.9%. So lower than last year, but you know. <coughs> It's quite substantial when you're talking about a family plan, the, you know, on the districts, 80% of that. The is, other that thing, is that our biggest increase is the health insurance? Yeah. Uh, it is overall, um, individual budget lines, some things that have increased was of course, our library or media services basically all of our contracted services through BUUSD. Those are really hard to budget for considering we pay a percent based off what their budget passes as. So we don't, we didn't know last year exactly what to budget for, for a couple of reasons. One, we took over more space in the middle of the year or towards the end of this year. And also because again, their budget didn't pass until two months ago. So we really, it's hard to anticipate, are they gonna be budgeting for facilities a dollar per square foot, a dollar 25? It's not based off actual. So you'll notice this year, it does look like there's double digit increases in those contracted services, but it's based off the actuals that I'm looking at when we get billed for it today, you know, this, this quarter, I'm forecasting that next year it'll be probably about 5% more. So besides health insurance, our contracted services are increasing. Uh, then the next thing I shared with you was kind of our wish list. It's called the director's draft. And that's, again, when I have Jody put on her director's hat, stop thinking like a superintendent, and we kind of throw out all the ideas of what's everything we want, we need, what this district could use. Um, there are notes on the right hand side, um, but you know, our biggest, some of our biggest expenses <coughs> are our program improvements. There's some equipment needs that need to be replaced either now or, you know, before we move into a new center or um, just some things that we've been putting off per se. Uh, also, if we decided to increase any kind of programming, we would need to have an additional lab assistant. Right now we have four, and what our lab assistants are, are, are basically uh, 
they're substitutes and they work in classrooms and if we have more programs we will need another one to help support the students. They also support when co-op students are here. Uh, Guy, you sent an earlier question about um, some of the programming and the numbers and most of our programs have a cap so auto well, the heavy trades they have to have, they have a cap at 16 students with one teacher if you go over that you need to make sure that you have someone else there so if we were to take more students in into the regular <laughs> program then we would need a lab assistant assigned completely to that program if we take extra that are co-op students and they're only in there one day a week then we need someone assigned to that program half time so 50 percent of the time even though the kids are there one day a week This also has, the wish list has the if baking arts moved off campus so that we could take in more baking arts and more culinary arts students. It has some of the, um, I think Michelle already said, some of the bigger items that instructors told us were coming up that needed to be done. Uh, increased tuition for VTSU for our EMS2 that I anticipate. And you base that tuition assumption off of the this year five students, not not if we have more students because that would also yeah. increase the cost. Five. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. So, um, so Jody, I have a, a question about the baking arts. I kind of asked this last time, but I, I think I want to ask it a little bit differently. So when I look at the numbers in terms of uh, you know plus or minus. Um, I know you, you said the rationale for moving offsite would be potentially to have more students, but if I look at the numbers right now, uh, it doesn't seem that we're reaching the maximum capacity. And maybe I'm not uh, reading it correctly, and maybe I'm not understanding that maximum capacity maybe is not uh, available where we are right now. So I guess, number one, that's my question. Uh, number two is just a, a statement because I think I said last time it wasn't it doesn't seem all that long ago that baking arts was was off sites and uh, and one of the reasons we brought it back in I believe was that you know they just were not getting numbers I mean if I, if I remember correctly the last year was like you know five kids so I, I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap my arms around that particular one because uh that that's a significant increase in terms of you know what we're giving to that program if we um you might not have noticed it because program quality had the documents that showed applicants and admissions data and then they had the um what does it cost for the program with the how much would we need to break even sort of thing the program analysis and there were 30 plus applicants for both culinary and baking arts but because they're both merged in that same small kitchen space, we have we are at capacity with those two programs right now. We have a total of 15 students in both, which is all we can fit in those small spaces. So if we were to pull one out, we would be able to have potentially 14 to 16 in both programs separately, but we can't do that in the space that they're in right now. So we, we have seen an increase in applicants in those programs, guys, since they moved it back on campus, it still might not be enough to um, make it worthwhile for us to find a place to renovate and rent. <clears throat> it, I mean, that kind of segues into my projected program analysis. And again, early projections, just kind of something to look at. I have the FY25 budget and tuition, the number of students we have currently enrolled, and our break-even. So then if I'm looking at next year, again, the budget that I'm using is the budget of, of level services. So the original budget. This isn't the wish list. This isn't adding anything, moving programs, adding programs. This is truly level services. And based off that, we can estimate our tuitions just over $20,000. And so you can see I have the max number of students that could possibly be enrolled in these programs. So total students, including co-op students, 
if, if that's the max, you can see the break even. And some of the programs, even if they were fully enrolled, just can't break even. And two of those are baking and culinary. And again, it's because they have a max where they are. They can't, they can only enroll so many students in the space that they're in, but they need X amount of students to break even. So you can, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. You can see that, but you can see some of the other programs too, how, what they would need to do in order to break even. Everybody needs to be fully en enrolled. And then that, that also doesn't show some, so the emergency services too, it's based on the five students, that's what the overall cost is. But if Big TSU and we can't come to an agreement and we had 12 students, the cost of BTSU tuition would be much greater than what's in there for the formula. And so the, there would not be a break even possibility on that program. Right. Simply because, so in the past and always, there are some programs that carry the weight of other programs. Ronvin, you have a question? Uh, yeah, on the, on the baking and culinary, so for the FI26 max number, we have 14 and 14 uh, with the break even of 16 and 15. Is there, was there a reason that they couldn't be 16 and 15? They can't, even if, in if we went off site. No, we could have 16 and 15 if we went off site with one of them, but that cost of going off site is not in there. Right. Does that make sense? My numbers. So that's not, that's the like. Right. So then cost. the break even is going to be more like eighteen and seventeen Correct. or something like Correct. that. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of interesting, is if I were to use our current enrolled students and kind of put it in that max number of students, if it, if I if we kept the same number of students and I put it in for next year, you're hearing about the same programs again and again that just aren't quite meeting the number of students that they need. And that includes, you know, medical professions, EMS one and two, baking and culinary, digital media two, and design and fabrication. Those are our programs in which if they carried their enrollment forward, which they have this year, they wouldn't be able to break even. And again, like Jody pointed out, we don't expect everybody to break even. There are some programs um, that are going to just, like cosmetology, it's a lower cost, so they can carry more students and they can help those support those other programs. So it's not that we're asking for that. It's just some of these numbers. You know, emergency services needs eight, would need 18 students to break even. And digital media two would need 15 students. Design and fab would need 15 students. And we've never had the enrollment. We actually can't have that. Yeah, we, some of them we can't have and others based off previous, it's just. You know, and we can talk about the programs kind of, we'll always, we'll continually be talking about the programs, but kind of back to our budgeting Thoughts, comments, what direction is the board wanting to go? Lyman? Um, I guess the way that I'm looking at this is we have this bracket of 9% of level funding and 20 whatever percent for the director's budget and we need to be somewhere in the middle. And it would be helpful to have some sort of idea of priority. Um, Cause I don't know that we can make the, the distinction that HVAC should get this and cosmetology, cosmetology should get that or whatever. Um, is that something that's possible? Maybe, I think we would prefer a target number. Like what's the percentage the board wants us to bring forth for our next board meeting. And, and then we can make some decisions based on that and it'll be prioritized. And then the board can say, great, thanks for this prioritized list in this budget that you brought. We agree with this, this, and this, and not this. And so we're gonna shift that part. 
But we want, basically, from this meeting, we need your recommendation on where are we aiming? Where are we aiming at getting the general census of, of the, I mean, the board's priorities? Do they think that we should make it a priority to move places off site? Do they think it's a priority to support programs that need heavy support? Or do they think it's more, should we be investing this money in current programs and and one of the um, things that program quality asked um, Alice, they gave Alice and I some jobs to do. And so one for me was to reach out to Vermont State University again and see if we can find some sort of happy medium for our tuition for our paramedicine uh, because it is the only one in the state and that's really important. And so we have reached out. We had a preliminary meeting with a small group of people who don't get to make the decisions. We have another meeting that we've been trying to schedule, and we got everybody except one of the decision makers at the table for this Friday. So now we're looking at right after the Thanksgiving break and trying to get everybody there. So we're, there's been response to the, we're going to have to cut this program if you guys aren't working with us, um, but we don't have an answer yet. So I think that will help us as well. And I don't have an answer yet from the um, who is going to be in on Senate Ed as yet. Um, some of the previous members seem to be asking to have that to be reinstated into that committee, but there's no one for sure. But my task was to discuss how why the um, gov the legislature isn't providing significantly more finance for the students to go to the colleges without trying without the career center losing money and they don't seem to know about it they didn't seem to know that that even is a an, a, a situation that we're dealing with so it, it's at least been brought to their attention I think they forget, I think they every, forget year. every year because we were there. We were but there. I, but I also would, also say, would say that there are a few, are a few of, our of our local legislators, legislators who have told me they're, told coming, me they're to the coming to the open house. So hopefully we can bend their, we can bend their air, air a little bit this Thursday night. Okay, good. I'll be there. It also appears that from um, listening to folks at the uh, Vermont School Boards uh, Association conference that it looks like the lowest that any district is probably able to put forth will be about 11% about and no one's really um, sure that even they, they could make that mark. You know, another point to that, another in cost increase that we had discussed last year, but just to bring it up again this year, is we have that child care tax that is 0.11%. Uh, and, and for a small district like us, it still costs us about $40,000. So I can't imagine these large districts, that that cost that came on July 1st, that it was really hard to budget. I mean, you don't budget for it. It was really kind of came fast. Oh, sorry, Alice. Um, th this is a guy. I don't know if my, yeah. uh, I don't know if this is my right brain or left brain, but let me try something. So, you know, in listening to Jody, it, it sounds like there are going to be some changes at some point. But uh, as we all know, if there are going to be changes, they probably are not going to be immediate. Would be my guess. I, I, I'm thinking that they're probably. If there are going to be changes, they're probably at least a year away, but I could be wrong from that perspective. And we're still catching up with our uh, our student rate, so the you know the three-year average. So uh, we we won't fully benefit from that until is it next year, Michelle, or the year after? 
from the in the new programs about three years. So yeah. So it certainly seems to me that you know somewhere between you know what our increase is and eleven percent is is a reasonable you know is a reasonable increase and and might find some space for what Lyman was talking about in terms of you know pieces of the wish list and you know I certainly would need to hear more about that but um, that's just my initial thought right now without knowing a whole lot. So your suggestion was a between nine and eleven, like come back with an eleven percent budget increase to share. Was that? Uh, I'm, I'm, I wasn't suggesting that, but I'm 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 thinking that based on what I I'm looking at and based on what I'm hearing, that you know that certainly would be, um, it, it wouldn't be outrageous, I don't think, but um, right. but. But I don't know what outrageous is anymore because, you know, certainly the populace has spoken and, uh, you know, they're they're certainly keeping an eye on things. Jason, is that do you have a question? Well, uh, yeah, I was just double checking. What time's the open house? Five thirty. Five thirty. Okay. Five thirty to seven thirty on Thursday night. Okay, we've got a newly elected house rep that I'm going to ask if he'd like to join us. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Lyman? Michelle, what was our um, increase last year? Percentage? Double digits, but let me go back and double check. It was 11.3%. And that increased our tuition. We actually had a substantial gain in FTEs last year, uh, almost, I don't know, 15 kids. So it actually only increased our tuition by 0.8%. But our overall budget increase was 11.3%. Scott? Yeah, can you all remind me, um, do the individual towns vote on the, um, on the CVCC budget separate from their own? And I, Jody, I'm seeing, or sorry, Michelle, I'm seeing your head nod. And did, did any towns vote down the CVCC budget? not know and we don't it doesn't matter what individual towns say as long as overall they they the majority passes it so across our 18 towns it passed um, so I can't say if a town might have voted it down because we don't we don't get that information we get them all together um, it is a separate budget that is voted on and then but I always try to remind everyone that it's embedded in your budgets too because that's it's not money on top of what their school district is spending it's already embedded in there they're just saying yes we agree this needs to go to the career center so to piggyback on that so once the, everybody agrees you know as a collective that our budget is passed the sending schools are legally obligated to 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 honor that and pay us their tuition and so they have to budget for it so if ours passes and Montpelier's doesn't it, they still have to ours they can't negotiate with us about our tuition our tuition is separate and they are obligated to pay once it's passed gotcha thank you Does someone else have a hand up? Lyman, you're back. <laughs> All right, I promise this will be the last time. Not really, but <laughs> I'm promised anyway. Um, if if you had to say, Jody, this is a tough question, but if you had to say, last year we did some innovative things because we wanted to include design and fab and ultimately um welding and whatnot 
Would you say that if we made some changes for next year, they would be innovative changes or maintenance changes? And, and the reason that I'm asking this is I think we need that as a rationale or a justification for an equal or slightly larger budget increase. You know, if we say that we need to go up to 13% because all of a sudden we're going to open up the doors for a whole bunch of programs, I think that's a saleable thing. If it's just to maintain, then not necessarily. We're going to open any new programs next year. And so nothing brand new, no changes. However, we may be running the um, design and fabrication program, which has an expense because it's a granite museum um, piece. And we may be running emergency services too again. And those have those are hard to predict because it depends on the numbers, right? But they're gonna cost more um, and they're important because both of them are the only ones in the state. And so in a way it's innovative that way, but it's really a maintenance budget. There is, based on our discussion and program quality last time, there is a discussion about if we do not have enough applicants to run either one of those programs, would we then shift the funds and open a second building trades, for example? Um, and how could we do that? And so it would be trying to make sure we get in as many students as possible um, through our doors, not to take not to take less students, but how to do that and what does that look like? And so that would that's going to be based a decision that we would have to base on the first round applications, which we won't see until the end of December. So we need to set the budget before then. Don? All right. So, so, so Jody, you just just let me to I guess ask another question. If we opted to expand or open up. Or let's see what uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Uh, start another uh, series of the same program. Would would those be eligible for Perkins money? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, it, the don't Perkins know. money is sort of limited, anyways. But the what we have in Perkins can stay in Perkins. Perkins for perpetuity. So those salaries that yep. we have in there, we can keep in. Whereas if you start a new program and you put a teacher in there, you have to take them out after four years. So I think we're good as far as what's in Perkins, um, unless we decide not to continue the equity scholar, or for some reason we didn't want to continue the integrated academics pieces, That then we'd be talking about something different. Having a building trades, a second building trades, or a second electrical is more about finding a way to be flexible within our either extending our school day um, which could cost more money or trying to figure out how to use the classroom and workshop spaces at different times or within the same um, schedule that we have now so trying to figure out how we could use those resources with twice as many kids and it, it'll be complicated but it's something worth thinking about Thank you. So is there any other additional discussion or questions regarding the budget? So what is, so Jody, our, our plan is to um, give you what you need from us tonight is some kind of a percentage that, and then you'll come back with a budget that reflects yep. that yes what's our target in increase for the budget does anyone have any other suggestions other than 11 percent maximum 15 <laughs> 11 to 15. <laughs> guy guy you're muted Guy, I think you're talking, but you're muted. I've been accused of that many times. Uh, <laughs> so the 11% would not include any negotiated salaries. Is that correct? 
That is correct. Okay, so I just want to throw that out there uh, because you know the eleven percent is is you know you know the healthcare increases, which is not not chump change by any by any means. Right. And, uh, if you think we're not going to uh, have a negotiated salary uh, agreement, then we're all smoking something we shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> so just putting just putting the figure in context. How's that? Right. So, are we are we going to uh, stop there at at eleven? Or Lyman, you're back. <laughs> I think I'm much more comfortable with like 13 and and then we could come back to 12 or 11 or something if we had to. If we're at 11, we don't have any room to, to play. If you're at 11, you're talking about level services with the nego new negotiated contracts. That, that not much of anything else, that 2%. I, I kind of agree with Lyman. I mean, out of the gate, I was a little bit higher even, but um, I think 13 is a good number. Okay. Any other comments from the board? So shall we leave our, our business people and our director with 13 as a target? Just for the record, I'd like to go higher than 13. <laughs> afraid that that won't fly okay yep. well i'm looking for suggestions I, from other I members just heard, i just heard around 13 <laughs> which which could be above or below um lyman you're there you go okay well i guess i guess i guess what i would add is, is i mean there's nothing that's going to bind us to that and i think you know at this point we're all struggling to try to figure out from a programming standpoint you know what are the best options for kids and i i think that's the way we got to think of this and um you know we can always you know we can always make adjustments it's 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 always easier to come down than it is to go up you know um so i would certainly i'd be i'd be okay with greater than that okay so maybe a couple more i mean this is first draft and it basically i gave you level services to the very max so maybe we'll come in and kind of just kind of piece it out maybe and say okay if you did this this is a percent if you did this it's a two percent if you did this so maybe i can make it a little bit easier visually of, you know, like, okay, here's our base and then you can add on. Okay. We need a budget game. Yeah. Like a computer game. If I choose this and not this, what do I get? Like yeah. in my head, it's yeah. so great. Next him. Yeah. It just has to get it on the back. Mm. <laughs> So are we comfortable with moving forward with a a 15% increase to be reviewed? All right. Okay, so let's let's uh leave it at that and let our um building personnel, school personnel come back and see what we can work with. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Well, thank you. Now um, Jody, the real estate contract. So, um, as you know, our initial first choice is not available, and the next up or the next at the top of the list um, choice, they're wanting to talk and to negotiate a potential price for their property. And um, David Epstein from Truex Cullens recommended that we find a realtor that we could work with who could help us. Um, with the market value of the land. And so the contract there is for that purpose. 
Um, it has been sent to legal counsel, but they have not let us know yet um, what they, if they approve of it. So I guess if you um, take the action to approve us having Alice sign this, as long as legal counsel says yes, then we would be able to move forward with it. Something that I had a question about, um, what if the whole scene changes and the plan changes and we, we as a district are not going forward with any kind of a land purchase? Um, is there anything, I didn't see anything in that contract, but I want to be absolutely sure that the real estate agent, um, is there some kind of an entitlement that they would be um, allowed to bill us for, for any services if, if all of a sudden we decide not to go forward with any kind of a land purchase? I think that's important. <clears throat> um, Alice, do you remember, and maybe Guy also, when you, as BUUSD members, did the C building, that purchase agreement? Same realtor for BUSD at the time. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if you remember how that worked. She's aware that um, all we need right now is market value. Uh, are any of you realtors? Could we just go with one of you? <laughs> just check. Okay. Um, and uh, then if we do sign an agreement, that would the legal counsel is going to draw that up for the MOU for the landowner. So this she's not going to necessarily be doing that part. Um, and she, I don't know what else we would have her do. So the ask of the legal counsel was, this is what we need it for. Can you review this document and see if it's appropriate? Yeah. So if, if he says, if Mark McDermott says yes, then I would love for us to be able to move forward. I'm supposed to meet with the property owners on Wednesday morning. Um, but if he does not, then I understand we will not move forward with that piece and I can still meet with them and say, we're just not ready yet. Right. Because he here's my fear that we could end up with a contract for a piece of land for a, and, and a bond that doesn't fly. And that would be a problem. Well, it, the, the MOU for the piece of land, that's not what this is for. That would be that something, would be that, our something that our draws lawyer up draws up once we have an agreed, upon, we have an agreed price, upon price. And, and we would basically, we would basically pay an amount, pay an amount down, down that the landowner, that the would, landowner keep would get no to keep what. no matter what. And the rest, and of, the it rest be, of it would be um, based, um, based on whether or not that, whether or not that bond would pass. pass. So if it didn't pass, they get to keep that, they down, get to keep that down payment the and the MOU is null and void. That's a separate That's agreement. A separate agreement. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Alice, that signature is looking even more important. <laughs> uh, Jody, uh, a little more intel for you maybe. Uh, to uh, to leverage an angle, so I believe the owner is uh, of the graduating class at about the time the career center opened, uh, and also was an attendee of the career center. Uh, so I think his name across above the front door uh, in, in return for donating the property would be an amazing gift. <laughs> and it would, and, and the other thing is, it would relieve Alice of having to worry about signing the damn thing, because he's basically giving Alice a gift. But anyway, <laughs> it's a little intel. <laughs> yes, and um, their only property right now, and they're going to have to move and find a new home. So I'm not sure that they have the capacity to just donate it to us. But I appreciate what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I see this as, you know, we paid for a wetlands delineation, so we had information, right? And this is the same. Like, we need to find out what these people are thinking for a price, um, and we need to know what would be fair for ourselves, right? And so 
I don't know how any other way to get around that really. Okay. Right. Well, I'm, <coughs> I have a pen and a telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Lyman, you have a question. Uh, do you need a Do you need a motion? Is that what you're asking for? So, uh, a motion to allow Alice, uh, upon approval by the um, lawyers, to sign this contract. Yes, that's what I need. All right. So Lyman has made the motion for the chair to sign this contract based upon um, approval by our council. I'll second that, guy. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, hearing no discussion, I need a vote. Um, all those in favor indicate by either saying aye or doing a thumbs up. Aye. Aye. Okay. Anyone opposed? Hearing no opposition, motion carries. So we'll go forward with after after legal review. And the the um, contract is with Heaney Real Estate. All right. Um, any further uh, business that needs to come before this board at this time? All right. We'll, then we'll need a motion to adjourn. I just want to remind you that our next board meeting, December 9th, is going to be at Harwood. So we'll be hosting our meeting at Harwood Union High School in December. Okay. And we'll get uh, um, a notice of what place that is, where it is in Harwood, yep. what room and all that. It's in the library. In the library. Okay, very good. Um, then uh, we will... We will adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? All right. Hearing no opposition, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone, for taking the time out of your evening. My consensus.